everybody. Welcome to this week's uh, STEAM Storytime. My name is Kasha Dupuy. I'm from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. Um, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. So we do this STEAM Storytime. And STEAM, if you didn't know, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. Um, so we do a special story time geared for ages uh, kind of three to five um, every single Wednesday at 11 o'clock right here on our Facebook Live. Um, so this week, we're going to be talking about dandelions. Um, so I have a quick book, one of our favorites, they're all our favorites, <laughs> um, that we're going to read. We're going to do some printmaking, um, and then I have a special STEAM challenge for you to do at home. Um, so we're going to wait just another minute or two for everyone to log in. Um, if you have any, if you want me to say hi to somebody or have any shout outs, please mention in the comments. I can't see the comments myself, um, but someone is monitoring them and they're going to let me know if there's someone that I should say hi to. So please say hi. Um, we are also, oh, just a few more housekeeping things before we get started. Um, yes, I know the camera's this way instead of this way. Um, it makes for a better video afterwards when we upload to our YouTube channel. So instead of the video being this big, it's actually pretty, pretty big. Everything's a little bit clearer. Um, as usual, as you are, we're all from home right now. So I'm filming from home. That means my kids are around, my husband's around, my dogs are around. Usually they're pretty good, but it's been one of those mornings where everyone wants some attention. So you might have Evie jump up here or Sam or Frankie pop in to say hi. So uh, it'll just make it more interesting. Um, also, the same thing's been happening the last couple weeks. Um, my internet has been a little bit spotty. It's been okay so far this morning, but in case I do drop, um, I will be back and I won't, um, I won't des uh, desert you. Don't worry, I'll be back, okay? So it is 11.02, um, and thanks for joining us again. Uh, can you believe this is week five of Steam Storytime? We've done five separate virtual Steam Storytimes. Yeah. Oh, I see, I just got a message. Hi, Nick and Jake. How are you guys? Thanks for tuning in. Be excited to see what you can make later. Um, yeah, so we'll wait one more minute. It's 11.02, um, but I will show you the book that we're gonna be reading. Um, so we're gonna be reading A Green Green Garden by Mercer Mayer. So the Little Critter series, one of our favorites. They're all our favorites, I keep saying that, but of course, I'm picking books that we love to read too. <laughs> Amazing. So let's get started. One more time. My name is Kasha Dupuy. I'm from the Niagara New Lake Public Library, and this is Steam Storytime, week five, and we're going to be learning about dandelions. So let's get right into the book. So we're going to be reading A Green Green Garden by Mercer Mayer, and this one was published by Scholastic, it's right over there, um, and this specific copy was from 2011. So thanks uh, to Scholastic for letting us use this book today um, in our Steam Storytime. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. A Green Green Garden by Mercer Mayer. Here's the title page. And it is actually to Eileen and Tom Hearn. Oh, and look, what's little critter picking up there? Some worms. Anyone else like to look for worms? I love looking for worms. It is time to plant my garden. We go to the grocery store, or the garden store. It has everything we need. Mr. Pinky's Garden Store. Yay! I used to love going to the garden store with my parents and my sister. Felt like we were in like a jungle. I want a green, green garden. I find many seeds to plant. Mom says we will buy some seeds. Look at how many he has, and look at how many his mom's getting. Just a couple. Dad says we will also buy some baby plants. Look at all those baby plants. Squash, tomato, cucumber. They are very little. They all look the same. Oh, look, she's holding one of her plants like a little baby. Because it is a baby, right? Dad rents a plow from Mr. Pinky. We go home to plant my green, green garden. And it says, Mr. Pinky's rents a plow. Everything for your garden. Dad plows the garden. We pick up stones and clumps of grass. This is not fun. That's the hard part, the hard work of making a garden. But it's important. We plant the seeds and the baby plants. I am tired. I need cool water. Oh dear. He's <laughs> making a big puddle in his kitchen. But it's important to drink water so you can stay hydrated, right? 
We are finished. I say now we can rest. Dad says we must water each plant. We take turns. He's watering with the hose. Those are, that's my boy's favorite job, to water the plants. Sometimes too much. <laughs> Every day we weed, water, and wait. So he's weeding, taking out the weeds, he's watering the plants, and they're waiting. We weed, water, and wait some more. We wait a lot. Dad takes pictures. At school, I learn more about gardening. Oh look, they made a little garden at school. We make a compost heap full of old leaves and stuff. It makes good garden dirt. Does anybody know why? The leaves and you know the banana peel and some kitchen scraps, when they break down, um, all the nutrients go back into the soil and it actually helps the plants grow bigger and stronger and quicker sometimes too. We buy worms to put in my garden. The worms actually help the compost decompose faster, so break down faster. This is one of my favorites. We buy good bugs that eat bad bugs. So if I bring them a little bit closer, there are praying mantises that eat bugs that will um, eat the garden. And then there's ladybugs that love to eat these little things called aphids. And aphids like to eat through leaves and stuff. So ladybugs are good. Good for the garden. Oh dear. <laughs> Deer come and eat some of my garden. Lou wants to protect it. We don't have deer around us, but we have rabbits that come to eat stuff. And squirrels. Squirrels always take my tomatoes. They're not even ready yet, and they take them. Finally, I have a green, green garden. I have a yellow, orange, and red garden, too. So there's squash, pumpkins, tomatoes, beans, all those things. We have a great dinner, all from a green, green garden. Awesome. So again, that was A Green Green Garden by Mercer Mayer, um, published by Scholastic in 2011. Thank you again for letting us read the book. Um, so we are going to be talking about something that comes before your garden. So some people are just starting to plant their gardens now, but if you've been outside in the last couple days, and I hope you have because it's been sunny, it's been cold, but the weekend was beautiful, you have probably seen some of these guys. What are these? These are dandelions, um, and dandelions are so important to bees, especially in the spring, um, because dandelions are actually their very first source of food. So imagine being a bee, um, you've been you know, hibernating in your hive, you've been dormant in your hive all winter, you haven't had anything to eat since maybe November. That's a long time. They're, they're built for this, so it's okay. And you're waking up in the spring because it's getting warm, and you're really, really hungry, and the first thing you see are a whole bunch of dandelions. Ah, so you can have a big dandelion lunch. Um, so that's important. It's important to keep some of the dandelions in your front yard so that you can feed the bees because bees are important because if they are full and they get all their nutrients from the dandelions at the beginning of the spring, then that means that they're ready for the rest of the spring and the summer. And we need bees to help pollinate all of the other plants so that we can have food. So if you've driven down to Lakeshore or anywhere in Niagara on the Lake um, or in St. Catharines, there are some um, trees that are blooming, right? So there is um, like apple blossoms and cherry blossoms. Those trees need bees to be full from dandelions in order for us to have cherries and apples and all those things. Yeah, bees are important. So before I get started, I'm actually going to move my camera so it's going to be a little shaky for a bit. But we talked about dandelions and why they're so important and everyone's going to be able to see my messy setup. See all my stuff right there. Okay, so I'll put it in, that's my hand everybody, sorry about that. I'll put it in the holder here, but there we go. Oh, is that upside down? It might be upside down. We'll go this way. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so we'll go this way. Hopefully that's okay everybody. If not, I will edit it in the video and I'll see if it's upside down or not. Okay, so... Let's do some of the stuff that I said we were gonna do. So we're going to do some printmaking, um, and then we're also going to um, do a special steam take home. 
that is really fun for you guys to do at home. My boys love it. I had to actually hide these, these things over here that I'll show you later. So um, we are going to do some printmaking with our dandelions. So there's two different ways. There's actually two things I wanted to show you. Yeah, I thought it was upside down. Thanks for the note. I'm gonna try to do that again. Let's see if I can go this way. There we go. Okay, better? Oh, hi, Nicholas. I didn't know that it was two separate Nicholases. <laughs> okay, I think that should be better. Sorry about the upside down, everybody. Like I say every week, I'm still learning this stuff. <laughs> so we are going to doing some printmaking using dandelions, just like this. So if you look up close at a dandelion, so after this, go and take a peek at some. Um, look at all those little petals. Each one of those petals, if we dip them in paint, will give a separate um, texture, a separate impression, it's called. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to get my markers and I'm gonna have some um, green and some brown and some black. So I'm, I'm gonna draw a little bit of dirt at the bottom here, just really quickly. Just like so. Then I'm going to take my green, cause that's the color of a dandelion stem or leaf. And actually look, I have a dandelion leaf here. I picked it this morning, so it's kind of wilting already. But do you guys see the shape of the dandelion leaf? It's got like a straight part in the center and then it's got all these pointy spots, pointy um, leaves on the side. So I'm gonna do the stem first. I'll put that there so you guys can see. So I'm gonna draw the stem first. I'm gonna do one there, one there. One really tall one, one here, and you know what, I'll put one little short one there. And then I'm going to do some dandelion stems, just like this. So just kind of like a zigzag. See I'm doing a zigzag that works all the way around the stem? Just like so. And I'll do one here. That was a big one. And I'll do another one here. Oh, I started up too high. I'll make it a little bit lower. So, there we go. So I've made some dirt with some dandelion leaves and some stems. And then I'm going to take some paint. Now I'm gonna use yellow because we're making dandelions, but if you want to print with any other color, that is totally okay, because it's your artwork, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your dandelion just like this, and make sure it's open. And let me tell you something, this morning when I went to pick out dandelions because it's cold out, I totally didn't realize that they would still be closed like this. This one started to open. Um, but I had to put them in warm water to open up the balloons so that we got all that texture. So maybe don't do this first thing in the morning, maybe do it later in the afternoon. But what you're gonna do is take your dandelion and just kind of dab it in there and you can use your fingers just a little bit like so and that dandelion is covered with just a little bit of paint. Now you don't wanna dip your dandelion in a whole bunch of paint so that it's wet. You just wanna kinda of get a little bit on the edges, just kinda of dab it on like you're making a stamp. And this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna put it wherever you want your dandelion to go. Push down all around. You can kinda of give it a little shake and you peel it up and you get something that looks really pretty just like that. So I'll do it again right here, just like so. Now, you don't have to use yellow. You can do blue dandelions. You can do red dandelions. You can do any color you want. We can actually get another color and do yellow below as the base layer of our prints. And then we can do another color on top, right? So I could start with yellow on the bottom, the base layer here and I could do like orange on top, or I could do white on top. That would be really pretty. The other cool thing, there's a couple cool things you can do with dandelions or any um, blooms like this, is that you can actually use this like a paintbrush. So you can take some paint, my paint's kind of drying, if you can see that. My room is very dry, so everything dries really fast in here. Um, you can take some paint like this and use your dandelion like a paintbrush as well and get some really cool effects from that. But this is how you're gonna do a simple dandelion print. The other cool thing that looks really neat with this is because I drew the stems and the leaves, it looks like dandelions, right? Because we're talking about dandelions. These things, these dandelion blooms, also 
look like fireworks if you um, use different colors. So if you have a black piece of paper or you paint one kind of black or like dark blue and you take some really bright colors and dab around, it actually looks like fireworks in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's something else you can try with dandelions to paint with. You can also take your little leaf. Now you might need a, a fresher one than mine, but we can print with that as well. So you just put it down in the paint. I'm getting very messy today, I love it. And see how there's just a little bit of paint on the background? And you can print what looks like, ooh, I like that, the dandelion leaves too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first thing, dandelion printing. Now, I also have, I wanna show you something called pigment. Not figment, but pigment. So in this dandelion, there's the color yellow. We know that, right? It's not that someone painted this dandelion yellow. The pigment is actually inside the petals. So it's these little tiny particles, little tiny things um, of color called pigment. Um, and we can actually use these. We can get the pigment onto paper. So if you squash up some dandelions, um, you can actually paint with the yellow pigment that you get from dandelions. So I just wanted to show you that quick. And this is a cool way of doing this as well. So I'm gonna take a couple of these and I'm gonna take a big one. Look at this big one I found earlier. Here we go. Just like that. Look at how big that guy is. Wow, so cool. So I took the extra stem off. So if when you pick a dandelion, you actually have the stem like this, you wanna cut that part off. And then you can put it down with the bloom down where you want the color to be. And then you can fold paper or put it on top. And all you're gonna do, oh look, see some of it's right there. It kind of looks like a, like a little mustard stain, right? So you're going to push and push and push and push and you can use all your muscles. And this is a really good way to get out some, oh, I'm making the camera shake though. Um, really good way to get some of that energy out too. And it doesn't just work with dandelions, it works with other things as well. And then look, when we take this off, do you see, it's very subtle, but do you see that we got some of that pigment on the paper? That yellow came right from those dandelions. Yeah. You can also take a little hammer, if you have a little hammer when it's closed, and kind of bang it like that. But I'm not gonna do that on the camera because it makes the camera make shake too much. But that's a cool thing you can do too, to get all the pigment out of the dandelions. It's another fun way to do. And it's actually fun if you have like a little brother or sister um, and they don't really wanna paint the way that I've, that I've been showing them. They wanna do their own thing. They'll probably like to smush some flowers. It'd be pretty cool for them to do that with, um, to do that with them. Okay, so we've made prints using paint. We've found some pigment. We've got some pigment out of the leaves, out of the petals, sorry. And we've learned about what pigment is. It's color inside of things, natural color inside of things. Now what we're gonna do is make the thing that I'm most excited to share with you and something that you can do at home. We can actually use flowers, like dandelions, um, to color Play-Doh. So this is dandelion Play-Doh. I didn't add any yellow or any um, green or any other color food coloring or paint or anything to this. This Play-Doh is turned yellow from um, dandelions. Yeah, so we learned about the pigment and what it can do. So, I also wanted to show you this, and actually this Play-Doh is a really nice recipe. See how it's not sticky and it's like soft and pillowy. I made this last night just to make sure that it would work um, and it is a really good recipe. And I'll be sharing the recipe afterwards um, when I post, the, after the live stream is done, I'll post it in the comments below the video on our Facebook page. And once we get it up to YouTube, I'll also have the recipe up there as well, okay? Um, also, I wanted to show you this one. So this one was made with dandelions this one, I actually had a um, tulip that fell down. Well, okay, it didn't fall down. The squirrels bit it off and knocked it on the ground. But I used the tulip leaves, tulip petals, to turn this one into a pink, um, into a pink Play-Doh, yeah. So how do we do this? Well, let me show you how. You're gonna need some adult help for this. So adults, if you're watching, um, again, don't worry, I will have all the directions up Afterwards, you're going to need the stuff that you have here. So a mixing bowl, a mixing spoon, some flour, some salt, 
cream of tartar, some oil, and I have a little bit of extra flour so when I need it. But the main thing that you need are a bunch of dandelion petals. You can put some of the green parts of the dandelion in as well, but you need a bunch of dandelion petals. And what you're gonna do is in a blender with about half a cup of hot water to, make, to soften them, you're going to blend them. It looks kind of gross, I know, <laughs> but trust me, it makes something like this when it's all mixed together, okay? So we pulverized those dandelion petals. We made like a dandelion soup. And actually, I forgot to mention, did you know that we can actually, dandelions are safe for us to eat? Now, don't go around eating dandelions you see in your backyard, but um, people make dandelion jelly from dandelions. Um, you can have dandelion tea. Um, you can actually put dandelion leaves in salad. Yep, all those things. Dandelions are safe for us to eat as well as for bees. So they're actually a really awesome plant. So we should protect them. We need to keep them safe. Okay, let's make some Play-Doh. So we have a cup of flour and we have our mixture here. I'm gonna do that last. Then you need a third of a cup of salt. This is like Kasha's not really cooking show. Um, then you need some cream of tartar. I forgot to get a spoon, so we're just gonna ballpark it. It's about a tablespoon or two. That's a little bit more. Um, and then you're going to need two tablespoons of oil. And I used olive oil. You can use whatever kind you have. Um, I use olive oil because it already is kind of like a greeny tone, at least the one that I have right now. Okay. Then <clears throat> you're going to take your dandelion soup mixture. Actually, hmm, it actually smells kind of sweet. It's kind of neat. And then you're gonna mix it in. Now, use your mixing spoon or spatula to mix it all together. Just like that. Now, one other thing I'm just gonna mention, I might add a little extra flour to mine um, because uh, if anyone's gone looking for flour the last couple weeks, there's not too much left. Um, so I have a bag of cake or pastry flour, which I know is different than regular flour. So I have to use a little bit extra just to get it nice and strong. But that's also what science is about, right? Experimenting, trying different ways, seeing what works. It doesn't always work all the time. And you gotta figure things out. That's part of the cool thing of STEAM Storytime and science and engineering and art and math and everything in general. Yeah. Now, you know who came to visit? Evie's right here. She's like, you're, you're making food. Or I think you're making food. She's staring at me with her tail wagging. <laughs> Not for you, Evie girl. Okay, so this is still a little bit squishy because I need to add more flour because I only have cake or pastry flour, although it does make a really nice and smooth um, Play-Doh. So you're gonna mix it and knead it just like so. And you see when it starts to take shape, it has a really cool yellow um, color to it. Yeah, that is from the pigment in the dandelion leaves, or in the dandelion petals, just like so. Another thing you can do too, and I'm going to actually go, I'm gonna let this one rest a little bit. Clean up all that extra flour, but it's really soft. It's a really good Play-Doh recipe, yeah. Oh, look, if I hold it up close, can you guys see some of those little dandelion bits in there? Yeah, cool, we made natural Play-Doh using natural pigments. Another thing too, if you wanted to get it a little bit extra yellow and add some extra texture, is you can take one of your dandelions like this, an extra dan dandelion you have, and you're just gonna peel off, peel away those little um, yellow parts like so, and we'll use one more just to show you guys up close. Just like so. And you can push them in like that and mix it all in and it will actually give your Play-Doh some extra texture and look even more yellow. Yeah, look a little bit more interesting. Um, I also read online, if you don't feel like mixing your own Play-Doh, I totally get that. Look at all the mess. Mess is awesome though. We learn the most from mess, I'll tell you that. Um, you can also take some Play-Doh that you already have, um, especially if you're worried about allergies or anything like that. Um, take some existing Play-Doh, yellow or any other color, and you can add in dandelions to it. 
right? You can take those yellow pieces away and you can make your own dandelion textured Play-Doh. And a cool thing you can also do, if you're like me and you like to design things, is you can make a pattern, or I think it's called a mandala, or a face, haha, <laughs> with some dandelions just like that. There's lots of things you can do with the stuff you're finding in your own backyard, just like that. So look, it looks like a little dandelion cake. Hmm. All right, so that is our steam story time today. Oh, let me bring this one back in because I think some people would really like the pink color. So this one again, I did the exact same thing um, with the recipe, except instead of dandelion uh, petals, dandelion blooms, I used a tulip. And I actually got some of those grape hyacinths the blue ones, the blue purpley ones. I wanted to try it. I just didn't get a chance to today, but I can update you if those work out pretty cool too. Okay, so that's our steam story time today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit about dandelions. Um, I hope you're gonna do some dandelion printing and make some dandelion Play-Doh or any other kind of spring bloom Play-Doh. I would love to see your creations, whether it's the printmaking or Play-Doh, I'd love to hear all about what you thought and if you had fun today watching and, and doing uh, stuff with me. So thank you again for tuning in. Um, we will be back here next week um, at 11 o'clock um, to do our next Steam Story Time. And I see there's a question. This one we missed. Oh, um, I'll, I will answer that after, I promise. I just can't see. The way my camera's covered, um, it is, okay, what kind of paint do you just stamp the dandelions on the paper to make the drawing? Um, I used acrylic. That's what I'm comfortable with and I don't mind if it gets everywhere. Um, you can use any kind of paint. Um, tempera would probably work good um, because it's washable and it, can, it has a little bit of um, some like body to it. You know what would be really neat though? Watercolor paint. And if you don't have liquid watercolor paint, try mixing a little bit of food coloring with water and it will get you the same idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I used acrylic, but that's just because that's what I gravitate towards and I have a whole container full of acrylic that I'd like to use up. So thanks, uh, Miss Whitcomb. Thanks for tuning in every week. <laughs> um, but yes, if you have any feedback, Thank you so far for these comments today. This is amazing. One thing I've been mentioning is that with the virtual programming, I don't get a lot of feedback. I press finish and it's done. And I'm used to being able to talk to a room and getting responses and hearing what you think. So thank you very much. I appreciate that massively. So, oh, amazing, watercolor. Yeah, let me know how it goes. I'd love to see. Um, when you... When I finish today, if you have any comments, questions, emails, suggestions of topics you'd like to be covered, please let me know. Um, you can email me at kdupuy at nautlepl.org. Um, and again, yes, if you're educators watching, please use this. I would love to see um, some examples that uh, your students come up with because um, they have awesome minds too. And sometimes they think of awesome things that we don't even consider, right? So um, yeah, other than that, all the recipes will be in the comments in the live stream on our Facebook page afterwards, as well as on our YouTube. Thanks for joining again. And we'll see you next week at 11 o'clock for Steam Story Time. Um, we're going to be doing, um, I was playing around with it last night. We're going to be making some whale puppets. We're going to be reading a book about whales. Um, whales and rainbows. Weird combination, but you'll see how it works, okay? <laughs> okay, have an amazing rest of your Wednesday, everybody. Go enjoy the sunshine. Make sure you wear a sweater and some sunscreen. And we, I, will see you next week. Okay, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye, Nick. Bye, Nicholas and Jacob. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.